Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. We're kicking off Hispanic Heritage Month talking to Austin Hooper, tight end of the New England Patriots. Thank you so much for joining us, Austin. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for coming apart and starting off our Community Voices um, this month. Um, so first thing I want to start is your dad played football at San Diego State back in the day, um, and then your uncle played at Stanford, which is your alma mater. Was there ever any expectation for you to keep playing the game growing up? No, I wouldn't say there's an expectation uh, per se, uh, but once it was something I did want to do, it's like, all right, like if you're going to do it, like might as well be all in on it. So that's kind of when it kind of shifted more from kind of like a fun game. And then once I got to high school, it's like, all right, like let's let's really see what we can do here. So, I mean, I never really thought even when I was in high school, it's like the goals get to the pros, like the goals get to college. Like it was always just like one goal at a time. It wasn't like me being 12, like, oh, I'm trying to go to the league. No, For it was sure. like, all right, like, let's get better. Let's find a way how to, you know, get college paid for. So I was like, all right, that's my goal. And then once I got to college, I was like, all right, like I'm developing, like, Let's see if we can go pro. So it was just kind of small, uh, tangible steps along the way. For sure. And what maybe were some of like those challenges that you had to kind of overcome maybe in like your early onset career? Yeah, I mean, early in my pro career, I mean, the biggest thing was just kind of learning how to be, be a pro, meaning like understanding like your body is your business. Like if something's hurting, that doesn't mean like, oh, work's over. Like, let's just go home and do a whole lot of nothing and act like, I'm in high school or college where I just regenerate automatically and not have to do anything because you're, you're young and you're just like heal instantly. Yeah. And then about like my like third year in the league well, really like second year in the league where I was like, all right, I'm not Wolverine anymore. I'm not just like healing automatically. I have to like actually be proactive with my eating habits, with my sleep schedule, with my recovery work, like actually I had to build a routine, ask a lot of veterans around me, like, okay, what do you do that's helped you play for so many years? What do you like to do? What did work for you? What didn't like, how did you get there? And just ask a bunch of questions and a bunch of older guys pointing me in the right direction. For sure. That's definitely great. And would you say that like, obviously some of the advice that they gave you kind of contributed to maybe the successes that you've had as a player and maybe like speaking on those successes, how has that shaped the, not even just the player that you are, but the person that you are? Yeah. I mean, I think listening to the guys who've done it, um, just like anything else, like you just ask for some good counsel from people that are doing something that you're in or want to do. And kind of using that as kind of like a blueprint of what you want to do. And then you put your own spice on it for sure. But using that as like a template to build off of was definitely the the building blocks of how I started stacking things in terms of my development as a player, working on this bit of my game, working on that bit of my game, and just, you know, putting in the thousands of hours that's, you know, not sexy, but necessary yeah, uh, sure. to get to the final product, which is, you know, the fun stuff on game yeah, day. Yeah, 100%. And so getting to, you know, speak on this type of platform and things like that, what does Hispanic Heritage Month really mean for you? I mean, it's awesome. I mean, my grandfather being first generation uh, Mexican-American uh, in El Paso, Texas, didn't have a whole lot of opportunity, kind of used the Air Force as a way, him and his brother both, to uh, kind of better their their future circumstances and he's been such a important part of my life love him so much I mean just every big moment in my life he's been there so I mean immediately when I think Hispanic Heritage Month I immediately think about my grandfather that's amazing. And what do you think it's like for them kind of seeing you now, like, you know, being in the pros and obviously like coming from their background, that's maybe something that they didn't even dream um, in their wildest dream. So kind of being able to be like, that's my grandson. Um, how do you think that makes them feel? And, have you know, have you talked about it with them? Yeah, I mean, they're uh, they're super excited. I mean, especially they were there uh, when I got drafted. Um, when I got the call and you know everything went on TV and just having that cool family moment together and just obviously remaining close with them throughout the years and you know them visiting me in whatever city I'm playing in so 
being able to to keep that going and celebrate celebrate together as a family has been amazing. That's awesome. And so, you know, growing up or maybe just like things that you've seen recently, what would you say that are some of the um, influences of the Hispanic culture has made maybe on like the NFL and maybe in your time being or even when you were like coming up? Well, I mean, definitely more so now. I mean, now that we are having games played regularly in South America is yeah. awesome. I mean, I think that is the biggest thing. I mean, obviously, uh, the fans are one thing, but when the market dictates like, okay, like there is interest here and let's play there like that, that says more than anything I could say, just a market and essentially untapped markets. Like this is something we want to be a part of, like come down here. And it's, it's been awesome to see the game grow that way. No, for sure. And um, I am happy to say that we are donating $5,000 to your Austin Hooper Foundation. Um, sure. So would love to talk to you a little bit about that. What kind of made you start that organization? Like, why is it so important to you? Sure. I mean, I grew up in a family, we would always do some form of service, whether it was a Thanksgiving drive or Christmas drive, things of that nature. And when I finally got in a position where I could individually give back, I wanted to do it, but I wasn't necessarily sure, like, okay, what cause? There's a million different things you can go with. And then it was brought to my attention that when you're in the foster care system, you hit 18 years old, do you get a GED and a couple hundred bucks and say, go play life? Like, that yeah. That sucks. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's a hard hand of cards to play with. So once I heard that, I was like, okay, like, no disrespect to anything else, but, like, mm -hmm a million guys in the league that have like a dog charity or something i'm like yo like there we have young people out here that could use a little help for sure uh, so once I, I was made aware of that i was like all right that's a slam dunk home run right there that's something i want to do so once i got involved in it like anything else once you get involved in something you learn so much more once you're in it and kind of see exactly how the the system works and yeah every every bit helps for sure. And how has that been to kind of seen like the impact that your foundation has been able to bring into the lives of these young people or just in general, like anybody, what has that really like done for you? Oh man. I mean, seeing the, seeing the reaction of this young men and women, like I've almost been in tears a couple of times. You're just yeah. like, damn, like you don't, you know, you don't think about, you know, certain things that whether it's electronics or clothes or shoes just some that you you know you don't necessarily think of always and then just seeing the reaction it's powerful man ah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah it's it's worth it's indescribable it. for sure yeah, it's hard to articulate but yeah. it's just like something that you can feel and then when you're just seeing that you're just like all right like it's all worth it a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And in terms of like maybe your expectations or what you kind of look to see your foundation grow into or be like maybe what is, um I don't want to say expectations, but just maybe something that you would look forward to seeing the foundation do in the future, like seeing it kind of develop and grow more as to things that maybe you've already done. Um, and then what do you think that viewers should definitely know about your charity and maybe how can they even um, support or help? Yeah, I mean, I, I just go to the Internet, Austin Hooper Foundation would be the first link that comes up. I mean, but the main goal to answer your question is just continuing to build outreach with different communities I played on. Was this my fifth team now? So every place I go to, I, I try to find local um yeah, local communities, local organizations that are in that same field that can help me navigate the the local market and being able to partner up with them to affect things locally, I think is the most powerful. Um, because in my opinion, you can give a bunch to a number of wonderful national organizations, but what I found in a lot of these and you know, it's no shot at anybody, but when you have so many different employees doing something by the time the funds trickle down to where they're supposed to go, it's like you can just go to a local place and just give it directly. It doesn't even go from point A to B to C right. to D to E to yeah. F. It's like cut out the middleman, go to your local 
local community, places that need some help and uh, affect it directly from there. No, for sure. That's honestly amazing. Thank you so much for sharing what you've done for the community and what Hispanic Heritage Month means to you. We're definitely excited to keep that initiative going in your honor. Um, and we definitely want to thank you for, you know, kicking off this this month of Hispanic Heritage Month um, and definitely want to wish you the best of luck on the rest of your season. So we really appreciate you being a guest. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much.